Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how you can use the edit feature within Midjourney. It's been a feature that I've been playing around with, testing different images myself, and I figured I'd make a video on this because I got a little bit more comfortable with it over time. I find that I use this more for print on demand over stock photography, because for print on demand, I might want a very specific image as opposed to stock photography. I'm very lenient and very versatile with what I upload. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. The first thing we have to do is create an actual image. So I'm going to go over here to create. And you can see here, I already have some images created just so we don't waste any time for the video here. And this is just a prompt of a power lifter character lifting a barbell over his head, huge muscles, white background. Now, you can see here, let's just say I like this character and uh, this character right here, but I might want some hair on this character or I might want some maybe a uh, different characteristic that might change with this character. Well, I can actually work on that. I could change how the character appears through the edit function. So the way to do this is when you go to the edit function, you can select effectively what you want to edit, right? You can see I was testing it prior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the image and I'm going to just go ahead and download it, right? So I'm going to go over here and hit download. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit edit, click edit new image, and then just simply upload that image that I downloaded. So just drag it and drop it here. And you could see here it says edit uploaded image. So now what I can do is I can select effectively what I want to edit. And Real quick, I want I want you to look on my screen. You notice how my the circle here is going getting smaller and getting larger without me really doing anything. Well, what I'm doing is I'm using the scroll function on my mouse, right? So it's getting smaller, it's getting larger, right? And what this is going to allow me to do, it's going to allow me to select what I want to change, right? So let me explain, right? When I'm changing an image, sometimes I might not necessarily uh, be able to indicate exactly what I want to change, and there might be errors naturally in it. However, the nice feature about this is I have this little prompt, and the prompt helps the, I guess you could say the mid-journey AI kind of understand contextualization of what I want to change more effectively, and I'll, I'll show you how to kind of craft that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select some things. But before I do, notice here how I have a few options. I have erase, restore, and select. In my case, I want to select, right? Smart select. But I can select certain areas of what I want to change, right? So in this case, I could change effectively the whole face. Because if you look, I selected a part of the head. Let's say I wanted to add hair. But now I can change the whole entire face which is not necessarily a bad thing, right? So I might select that, and I might now start imagine this prompt, like imagine what I want to add to this context. So I might type in here, chibi power lifter, I would say with hair, blue eyes, let's say, with hair and blue eyes, uh, lifting, and now I'll just give it context to what's going on in the rest of the image, lifting a barbell. Okay, now let me go ahead and spell that properly. There we go, barbell. Now, let me be clear, guys. When I submit this, there's a lot of times I'll get something like this. Active selection, please isolate, remove, what does it say? Please isolate, remove, or cancel your mask first. Well, this mask is actually what I need to select what I want. A lot of the times, people might have some confusion as to why it's not submitting. Well, the reason why it's not submitting is... You have to actually choose what you want to do with this. Do you want to isolate it? Do you want to remove it? If you remove it, what you're basically saying is, I want to keep everything here, but remove everything else. So for example, if I click remove, or excuse me, isolate rather, isolate is what I want to keep and remove everything else. Uh, in my case, I don't want to isolate. I want to remove, right? I always get that confused, but there we go. Click remove, and now you can see there's this background that seems transparent. What happens now when I hit submit edit, okay? Now it's starting to function, it's starting to load, and it's going to figure out a new way to process the image. Now, here's the thing. If you notice, 
when I mentioned here, blue eyes lifting a barbell, the lifting a barbell part, I didn't necessarily need to include it. However, I personally like to give more context for this image. A lot of the times people who watch my videos and tutorials on certain things with mid journey, they hear me say, you don't need to have long prompts in the create section. I actually believe that, you know, the shorter, probably the better in most cases. Um, however, when it comes down to the edit, the more context you can give, the better. Now, you don't want to overdo it, of course. You don't want to have like a three-line uh, prompt for the edit feature because it could just simply take too long to load. However, um, what I like to do here is I just like to give context if it affects the way the image looks because obviously you could see here the barbell is placed right on top of the head of the athlete here. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to be waiting. Now, a little kind of warning here, when you use the edit feature within Midjourney, it does take a very long time, which is why I say this is kind of more for print-on-demand style things versus uh, stock photography. You know, if you're doing stock photography, we both know that we need quantity, we need, you know, to publish, publish, publish. That's not the case of here. Here is, I'm working on something very specific. Not necessarily just print on demand. Imagine I'm selling graphics on Etsy and I want my graphics to look a very, very specific way. I don't want to have issues in this circumstance where uh, something doesn't come out properly. Like, let's say I'm creating uh, pictures of strawberry logos, for example, or strawberry icons. And when customers download them on Etsy, they get the images and maybe there's a deformity in the strawberry, right? I'm giving you a simple example. Then next thing I, you know, I have to deal with returns, customer issues, bad reviews. So when it, when it matters in terms of specificity, that's when you kind of should pay attention to the specifics of the image. And this edit feature is a great feature to have for that. It saves you a lot of time. You don't have to sit there and manually edit the image. I've even done tutorials about 10, 12 months ago of me manually editing certain images that I produced with AI through GIMP. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was literally around Easter time last year. So almost a full year. And so my point here is this is a faster way of getting your little edits done, but you want to use this wisely where if you're focusing on using Midjourney to make you money, then you want to go on things where specificity matters. At, at least that's just my opinion, and that's what I've seen to work better. For me, I would ra much rather... Uh, you know, for something where specificity doesn't matter as much, like stock photography, just create as much as possible as opposed to sitting there and waiting for an image to be created. So you can kind of see the life cycle of how long it takes to create this image. We've been waiting for so long, and it's finally hit 10%, 35%, etc. And in a few seconds, we're going to start to see these different results. The reason why I really didn't pay attention to this tool as much prior is because it just wasn't on, you know, something that I cared about necessarily, you know, and you could see here now we kind of finally got the change. Now, look, look at how our context makes a difference, right? We right here with hair, blue eyes, right? So sometimes when you're creating stuff in the create section, the AI misses things, right, with your prompt. So let's take a look at the different solutions. We have this image, this image, this image, and this image. I think this image works the best. I think it just fits more naturally. It looks better. This one feels like, I don't know, maybe because the mouth illustration just doesn't seem uh, too, I guess you could say, fitting. Uh, this one, just different skin tone color, doesn't make it look too realistic. And then this one here, the face kind of just doesn't make sense. So I think this one is pretty much the best one here. And when you find something you like, just hit download, obviously. By hitting the download image here, you can even have it upscaled. But this is just a perfect example of what you can do with your edit feature. And this is a great feature if you want those specific type of graphics to be created for you. All right, guys. So thank you guys for watching. This is just once again another tool in your tool belt to become a better creator, make more money over time, and just learn how to use your software in a better way. All right. Get the biggest bang for your buck. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. And peace out, bye.